Hello. Ryan, can you hear me? Check, check. Check, check. There he is. The man in the flesh. Check, check. Check, check. Oh, cool. Hello, hello. Let me just get uh, your stream up so I can switch your team out. Okay. We're just uh, I'm playing TDM right now. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. Everybody can uh, hear you as well. Bring his volume up slightly. Okay. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> so, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I, yeah, I appreciate it too. I wasn't expecting that at all today. <laughs> well, I just, I don't know, I just, like, I never really heard back uh, from Dana, so I was like, well, whatever, I just saw, I don't know why, I just saw it, there was a tweet there or whatever, and I was just, why don't I just jump on tomorrow or whatever if he's, uh, if he's streaming. So, right. Um, yeah, because I always, I always wanted to, but um, never could sort of make it work. So uh, it's lunchtime here, so I probably have about, you know, 20 minutes or so. But uh, I figured since you've asked nicely so many times, um, like that's uh, I just jump on. Well, I appreciate it, especially during lunch. Still working. <laughs> yeah, still working, still yeah. working. Well, I mean, there are a lot of questions that a lot of us have. Um, sure. But I think one of the biggest ones would probably be uh, if if I have to specifically ask about tuning, it would be why go from the Gears 4 tuning at the end of the gear game to something completely like completely different. I know we added in the recoil system, mm -hmm. but it even then, even if you go past the recoil system, it still feels like a completely different game. And in most cases, mm. a lot of my experiences are just like it. It feels like cumbersome to do pretty much anything compared to Gears 4, Gears 3. It's very difficult to sort of break out of that. I mean, the melee has been adjusted, which is great. I saw it kind of coming because I figured it's overpowered as hell. So people will just abuse it eventually. Um, but just. For me, there's always the question like, why? Why in it is it sure. change, changed in the first place? So not necessarily yeah, so the, the melee, the biggest, but I mean the rest. Sure. So it specifics really help, but I'll just give a high level, um, like, like you know, it, there's so much tuning in the game that you know, I like when we talk about it internally, we try to, you know, be as specific as we can so that we can narrow the discussion a little bit. But just as a broad strokes, the largest challenge that we had was going from two tunings to one and like we made two tunings to really address kind of two different audiences with the first one like in gears four and the separation of those two really like, really made it so that we could kind of dial in sort of two different ways of playing the game and we heard from the audience that like you know that's great and all but it, we really just want one and um, the challenge with one has al always been to try to get, you know, the same one to service multiple people. So um, it's not to say that we've tried to make one that's bad. We've tried to make one that, like, tries to take good ideas from both. Um, but that's really just about kind of the, the lethality of the game, right? Like where the, the weapon damage is. So it's, it's, um, it's not the whole game obviously when we're talking about the the, the two different tunings like competitive versus core yeah. so when, when we talk about like where the game was at the end of four the game was really in two places right so five having kind of one place fundamentally means like we would have to there would be some departure from four there was just no because four had two and we had to go to one like there, there's no way that it could like that for everybody there'd be continuity there right either if we made it completely the same as core then the competitive guys would have a have a jump and then if the we made it the same as competitive then the core guys would have a jump and if we like so it like we looked at it as a way of trying to find a, a tuning that was both like as skillful as we could as well as like meeting expectations for people that are coming in um 
as sort of a solo player looking for like a fun online game to play that are still interested in a very high skill level, but competitive in Gears 4 was a departure from all previous Gears games. It had very little aim assist and the Nasher damage at, like was extremely low, right? Like it is, the competitive tuning on Gears 4 is unlike any previous Gears game. It's a, a beast in and of its own. Yeah. So like to get um, people that had kind of an expectation of how Gears played in the past, which was closer to core with this new competitive form, the expectations of how those played are so different. And we really tried hard to kind of make something that worked for both. And like, I'm still to this day, not totally sure that it's working for, for both. Like it's good. And it like it, like from a weapon to it just, I, I really wonder sometimes if both of these like groups of people really do want the same thing. Everybody wants one tuning, but they all want it to be the tuning that they want. Right. And yeah. so, um, it's that that was sort of the the reasoning for having a sing, like a single tuning and why it's different than four. Now there are other differences other than the weapon tuning, right? Like there's movement differences. There's like you say, like the core thing around recoil. Hmm. Um, uh, Although, there's from, also me, like changes in the in the net code as well, right? Yeah. So like we went to 60 hertz servers, which had to be yeah, optimized that, a lot. That was a huge, yeah, exactly. huge deal, so, of course. I lo lots of people yeah. that I try to because um, I remember in Gears 4 with the 30 hertz it, it upset me because um, in 2011 that was sort of the standard back then was at least 30 hertz of course every game yeah. has different net code I understand that uh, but I was trying to educate people into saying look there's lag that you have and there's lag that people always have just based on location and stuff and they're doing their best but in the future it will need to be better and a lot of times yeah. we've tried to ask that question to people and or to you guys essentially during the dev streams or during tweets yeah. and a lot of times it was ignored so i'm glad that you guys got that one done well, one thing that you, like we like i just want to say is like sometimes we can't talk about something oh, of course right? and it's not that we don't want to and like there's times where it's like they aren't listening to us they're listening to us. i just wish i could say no that i know doing i know something but it's just that we can't us right? as a community I, it, it's... I totally get your perspective, and I know I'm just I'm just expressing my, some of my frustration with the whole process. Is just that like I wish sometimes that we could just talk about everything, but because of you know it's a it's a game with like you know a whole giant like effort behind it that we can't always just talk about what we're doing. No, now, I the get cool that. thing about post-launch, the cool thing about having a live product is we can be way more like upfront and direct about what we're doing because a lot of it is in response to what the community is looking for and like we can just talk about the game a lot more directly than we could before the game gets released so um that's one of the reasons that i've been a lot more active in the like on twitter and in the forums is that i can say a lot more yeah. it isn't just always thanks for the feedback i hope you <laughs> like it when it comes out right like, it's I, a great like meme. I actually, it's a meme for yeah, everyone like I got, <laughs> thanks for the feedback yeah, like, yeah, well, I mean, that's at some point it is. It's like, like we the feedback's a gift. Like when it's when it's delivered constructively, it's a gift, and we appreciate it. It's just I, a lot of the time, I I can't respond like more deeply than that. But post launch now, like in, in the live part of the game, we actually can talk about a lot more things. So we're trying really hard to be uh, more transparent that way. Well, it, so, it's like, more, it that was more a reaction to you saying um you know you're not sure if everybody wants the same game that was my frustration too is that i was trying to get everyone on board to see where everyone's perspective is it's like are you aware of what netcode is do you understand how online games are put together and a lot of times people just even youtubers and other streamers would just complain about yeah it's just lagging and they wouldn't want to figure out why right and it would just scream at yeah. you guys and i would be like dude you're not helping you know you're just not helping yeah. you're making it worse because i you mean like and i mean like to some extent like it's a game and they should just be allowed to play the game and and you know have their frustrations and have their joys like it's like to have to worry about too much how it's made sometimes like can get in the way of a lot of people's fun and they shouldn't be a requirement that you know have to get it made know how it gets made in order to have fun right and and we we do want to create the best kind of out of the box thing like like game that doesn't require a ton of explanation now given that it's an online game and there's lots and lots of possibilities for you know 
things to happen that create a bad experience, um, obviously we do have to do some explaining. But um, we hope that in the future, the software does a lot better at just explaining what's happening when it's something that's out of our control. Like we have those little tiny, like, hey, you've got a like packet loss or you know you're lagging or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we've seen videos of people saying, hey, what's going on here? Like da 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 da. And then like in the corner is this little thing. And obviously we aren't doing a good enough job of telling people when like there's just a network problem with the game but that isn't that's probably one tenth of the videos we see most of the issues are are either bugs or um sort of things people like expect to work in a different way but i want to get back to the tuning for a second which is so the the movement like it depends what you like if you're talking about like how every like movement you know the lancer the nasher <laughs> the um the recoil the um you know the modes the um like the 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 server net code like if you're saying that on all every one of these things like we've taken a step backwards um then like that's like you know totally respect the feedback it'd be great to narrow the discussion down to one of them that you think is like the most sort of off the mark so to speak. uh well let's just say even regardless whether you played core or competitive in gears 4 uh it always felt really smooth um mm -hmm. In terms of like you could just combine certain moves or sort of animation cancel a lot of things like the reaction shot and slap shot that sort of thing right um but in gears 5 it it feels a lot a lot of the times you're putting you're pressing a few buttons that used to work in gears 2 gears right. 3 gears judgment etc i played them all even in ultimate edition right and then in gears yeah. 5 it it feels like this unexplainable delay between yeah. inputs and it's yeah. very so there's, yes. very it feels yeah. so inconsistent because regardless of lag, because I have a 500 megabit uh, connection sure. on fiber optic. So even in Europe, I should never have that problem. But it's it almost feels like it's a hidden mechanic in the game that is unclear to us when it's actually there. And in the sure. other Gears games, when something was strange, you would just sort of adapt or learn and eventually you'd get it. But in, in Gears right. 5, it, it feels like intentional. So... Yeah, there is, there is, I've said this on Twitter too, like there is no intentional delay anywhere. Like there is no like, hey, we really want to kind of invisibly compensate for something that's, we are trying to get the most responsive game we can. Now, that means that either, like there's a few things going on there, like one, maybe you're on a server that's in a different place, or two, we have a bug that is, um, like making the processing taking longer or three like we've put a, a delay in on certain inputs to kind of balance things now i talked about this on the stream that i think that but i don't i like you know not it's only you know only a few thousand people look at the stream or whatever but like i talked about <laughs> um you're like, always going mean, to insult like, people so it so, doesn't matter <laughs> it's so much bigger no no what i mean is is that like the number of people that play like that's why i said like not everybody knows who i am because there's so many people that are playing the game that like our, our streams only reach a a, a small yeah, portion of, of them right so like um so i'm sure there's people watching this right now that probably didn't see the stream or whatever so um i what i like uh what i what i said on stream was that we may have oh hang on ryan always have five where sorry sorry could you repeat that five... because um when the game loads this is another bug by sure. the way like a yeah. cpu thing yeah. it goes into a loading screen and all sound sort of disappears it sure. only happens on pc sure. but yeah you're back um so what i said on the stream which i i believe i was that after like looking at a lot of the feedback and um i think that we had this philosophy that we were developing over four which was to kind of like um make um sort of like take off the problems as opposed to preserve or grow the good things and what i mean by this is like you know like when you have somebody that like rolls and they kind of come out of the role and they're forced to stand up and yeah. then they can shoot or whatever well that doesn't feel very fluid but it makes it fair to the person on the other side who sees the role happen, right? Like, okay, like the role happens, then then because of network latency, they see them come up and then they can shoot again as opposed to shooting out of the role, right? So we erred on the side of like making sure that everybody knew what was happening. And then like on another side, like, okay, um, there's another sort of delay on um, shooting out of 
I don't know, like um, cancel or whatever to kind of make sure that people were protected from somebody like spamming too much, right? And what this did was kind of make it so we reduced problems, but it also took away good things at right. the same time, right? Like, yeah. and we, we think that we have erred too far on the side of like protection and not just of noobs from everybody. Like it really isn't, it's not about noobs or good players. It's about the thing you see happening in front of you because of network latency. Like, is it fair or not? Right. It isn't a, it's not a matter of, of skill level. It's just a matter of the fact that a hundred milliseconds go by in a very close quarters game can mean like a meter or two difference. Right. So, um, there's a, like, you're looking at the stream, right? Yeah. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm just, I figured, um, cause we'll get into what you're shooting through the wall thing there. Yeah. You want to yeah. So it? yeah, we can, I we can get into that in a second. I sent, um, so, Octus go ahead. a video yep. specifically showing this and he yep. never got back to me. So, but you were, sure. were going to say something. Yeah, sure. Let me just finish for a second. Um, so I think we're going forward and we're starting this with the next like operation, we're going to be looking very specifically at how we bring back like more responsiveness and good things as opposed to just kind of blunting the game to make it kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of online fair for everybody. So we think we've kind of bruised the core game by making it kind of overly fair. And this has meant that the, everybody's local experience feels a little squishy. So um, we're going to, We've taken a, an alternate philosophy now, which is to try to um, really focus on kind of what makes it f like fun to play, even at the expense of potentially some online fairness. So that might mean you get shot a little bit when people are like rolling sideways a little bit, or you get like people that are like spamming the, the cancel can sort of shoot a little bit more or whatever, but it'll make the game feel and flow better when you're playing. You'll just have to live with a little bit more um, kind of lag sensitivity, right? So, and I, but it'll make the game feel better to play. And so, this this <laughs> sort of this trade off, yeah, right. we think, we think because because historically the games I mean, really the didn't games take had this so awful, much into account. Had awful like, net codes. So we we're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> we're used yeah, exactly, to right? dealing it, with it. They, they they massively erred on the side of responsiveness. Versus kind of compensating for the net, like for the delay, or for, for yeah. like so. Um, what we're gonna do is kind of embrace more of that, but see if we can push it further because we've gotten some really great feedback on kind of what worked well in different games, and we think that we've kind of embraced more of like what makes the core. Like we really want to bring back the first part is to bring back some strafing combat, like a uh, play, right and like after kind of diving into some of the details, um, like the first thing that we're going to do in the in the new movement uh, is like I think I talked about this on stream is to make the kind of initial acceleration faster. So when you're moving, so that you know when you wiggle the controller, I don't know if you're playing on mouse and keyboard or the controller. No, I'm I'm always controller. But, yeah. yeah. So if you like when you wiggle, like if you just wiggle the left stick a little bit, just back and forth, like it's really squishy, right? Yeah. Like you kind of don't move. It's not very yeah. Like you just sort of stand still. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not really dead zone. Um, that's an input filter. No, I know, thing, but, but it feels it to me it feels really like a dead zone where it doesn't yeah. matter whether I move left or right. I'm basically exactly. in the same spot. So that's right. Yeah. Exactly. So we're looking at bringing a lot more um, like sensitivity to that, so that you can kind of get more fine precision in the strafing. Um, uh, as a first step, and then we're gonna, like after the that first step, we're gonna start looking at all those little delays and really like challenging each one of them to say like, is this really necessary? Like, is this like, what if if we reduce it or remove it, will it make the game feel sm smoother? Like, we're we're gonna go sort of go through each one of those things and and um, kind of challenge to to see if we can bring back some more of the things that were smooth and fun about the game as opposed to just fair. And mm -hmm. a lot of this was really like sort of originally was trying to bring back some of that slower feeling from previous games like that like try to blend kind of gears three and gears one together we think that that we did it even though our intentions were good we think that we kind of um the process we used might have been a little um like 
Well, anyway, well, we might have ended up kind form. of blunting both of them and not ending up with a great result in the middle. So, um, like four was really kind of three, you know, three point carried, five carried on from three. Yeah. Well, it's actually, well, core I mean, like, was, anyway. Sure, sure. Like you can look at it that way. For us, because we rebuilt the whole game from scratch, we look at it a little different. But yeah, of you can start, it's it's it's, philo it's philosophically aligned, um, kind of with three and five was trying to bring more elements of one in. But um, and sort of make a slower, um, more deliberate game. But I think that also meant that we ended up blunting or bruising some of the some of the fun out of it. So we've kind of realigned our philosophy, and we're pretty. I, we've been trying it internally, and it's super. It's this part of it that kind of local strafe play is so much better now. Now that doesn't mean we're done. It means it's sort of the beginning of this journey where we're going to go through and kind of look at all of the movement and all the shooting at, at relative to movement and see it, how we can make it better. So that's kind of that's the part we're looking at right now. Um, uh, I I've already talked about the, what I want to do with the Nasher, but like anytime we touch it, you know, we offend one person and we make somebody else happy so hmm. that one's always harder to, to yeah adjust. some people so, yeah, you want to talk about the they had some questions about that um but i think you could probably go on about that for hours you were asking about sure. changing the gib range on the nasher making it lower yeah just i want to bring the gib range in a little bit and i want to put a little more long range poke on it so which i think would be healthy for the gun um we might just do it and see what see what happens so we'll, hmm. we're still discussing it internally yeah that's the to hear you say all this, like, um, I don't mean to be offensive about this, but this reminds sure. me of almost the same state that Gears 4 was in at the beginning. Because we've had moments during Gears 4 where some guns were overtuned, like the hammer burst, before it turned into a pickup, sure. where it stayed pretty much the same for six to eight months or something. It was a long time. And I right. dealt with it because I knew how to play around something like that, and I wouldn't just lower sure. myself to... Like, because it made people quit just pretty much every game. And that type of stuff, not just as a streamer, but just as a player in general, it's just really frustrating because you're, the whole game will revolve around that one single thing. And I mm. get that there's a lot of Nasher purists out there, but even they need to accept that the game cannot just revolve around Nashers, right? That, that the game's always revolved around that in the fun aspect, I suppose, but... Uh, in terms of basically addressing every player that plays the game, some people want to do that all round type of playstyle, which is me and yeah. plenty of others. And as a We've team really, player, so yeah, you have like to... I totally agree with you. Like I think, like it's always been a challenge bringing more depth in or range rather. Let's say range, like more range in the weapon hmm. um, play, like more diversity. Um, we've worked really, really hard at that to try to make sure that like, more weapons get played than just the Nasher. And um, we still have a very, like, it's still, the Nasher is all, like, is the sort of center of everything else because of that Gib range. Yeah. That fixed Gib range kind of ends up determining so many other, like, tuning that happens past that. So, I, like, one thing I want to address a little bit is what you said about Gears 4 at launch versus this at launch. I actually think we have a much better grasp now of what, like, good tuning looks like for the weapons um at launch i think there was actually well, i wasn't very upset few about the gears 4 launch that were really tuning. but right, i mostly sure. i, I mean, mostly played um uh core anyway because that's where king of the right. hill was and i don't i'm not right. going to get into game modes or anything um but it was sort of the i've always said or not always in the beginning i was kind of like okay whatever two tunings i'll play whatever i need to play my game mode because that's what's important right. to me um but eventually when people said, oh no, all they need is just a single tuning. And then I started arguing like, yeah, I mean, we can have two tunings that are meant for both people, or we can have one tuning that's meant for no one. And we're sort of at the case now where even you say, no matter what we change, someone out there will either have to adapt or they'll just complain until it's changed or something. Yeah. And that's a very sticky situation to be in because I know the Gears community. Gears community probably knows me a little bit. And there's always something to complain about, but there are some things in the game, probably because it's a third person shooter as well, that just is, it's broken, but because it's a third person shooter, because you can abuse it, like the Gib range with the Nasher, right hand advantage is so strong that some spots on the map, if you control that, 
it's done, you know, like that's unbreakable. Yeah. And that's not if you focus your time changing that, then it probably takes away time and energy and money, of course, and people from changing a whole bunch of things that could be changed. But because but, no one's but really aware there's, of what's there's going one, on. One key thing about extent, like we ended like the Gears 5 shotgun is is two things. It's one, it's really close to the competitive shotgun with actives. So if you actived the competitive four shotgun, it's pretty close to the damage curve, mm -hmm. a little bit different at the close range, but it's pretty close to what the Gears 5 one is. Um, but it, the Gears 5 shotgun has a different pellet pattern. Um, it has two more in the center. It's It like has a bunch of fixes to make it way yeah. more consistent in terms of how it lands pellets. So um, like at short range it's a little more effective than the competitive one but relative to core it's very different and one thing i will say about core tuning is it's snappier like it when was. you play core tuning in gears 4 it's higher lethality like you know it's punchier it's weightier mm -hmm. um now that's exactly the things that the competitive community didn't like about it is they wanted like long drawn out fights yep. so we have this one community that likes long drawn out fights and we have another community that likes big punchy poppy combat right? right and so like the the gears five is trying to be both of these things to both of these groups mm -hmm. and um like but i think if you were to ask the community would you guys want two different tunings there'd just be this giant yell of like no, no no we absolutely don't but i think then like well what should we do well like oh well it has to be like the way that i want it and that's so we're stuck like we're kind of stuck that way and that we're trying to find one that we will continue to try to find one that really does have a really high skill gap mm -hmm. and is punchy, right? So I think that one of the, the mis not mistakes, one of the, the shortcomings of the current Nasher is that it's it's so kind of close range like the Gears 4 competitive one was that it means that the, Na the Lancer feels so much stronger, even though it's actually not. It's actually weaker. Yeah, I'll talk about that thing in a second. Um, actually, I can talk about it right now if you want, which is basically what's happening is there's like a, a like a check that when you look at him with your crosshair. Yeah. So they're like, look at him again. Yeah. So there's a, there's a check which says my crosshair is over him and I'm like my, my character's weapon is actually in the, um, like we're very, very close to the, the, the thing in front of him, in front of you. And it means that we're going to take like basically give you center screen aiming at this moment. Now there's there's a limit to this. And um, if we don't do this, if we eliminate this completely, there'll be other cases where you're gonna tell me like, why is it hitting like the thing in front of me? It doesn't make sense. Well, now, I, I, I'm gonna this disagree particular with that. case- I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna let finish, finish though, yeah. <laughs> this, I, think we're too, I think we're too generous. So I think like, like you're showing here, I think we're too generous. Well, it's not just you, but just to let you know that off, oh. Of course, I'm in a loading screen. So I even I like um, my bad. We're too I was in a loading there. screen, so it uh, cut us off. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, I was just saying I think we're too generous, and I think we can improve that. Um, I think that our checks are have been primarily intended to make the game feel good to shoot, as opposed to I'm constantly hitting the cover while I'm trying to shoot all the time. Um, now that doesn't mean that it just lets you shoot in every circumstance. It's just for most things, it works out pretty well. Well, but since you've changed it, since you've added the check for horizontal covers, that's made it better. Right. Um, yeah. But as a result, like I, I've been doing Gears for so long and trying to teach people these mechanics because it's just a meta of the game. Either you do it yeah. or you lose pretty much. Um, that sure. the meta now changes into because people don't know how to play around it, they'll just play even more defensive. And right. that kind of ruins any flow that you could potentially have. Uh, but just sure. to say, you're not the only one in this. This has been around since Gears of War 2. So oh, yeah, it's yeah, not really yeah. your fault or anything, but it is something that... Well, we actively work on it. No, of we course, work on of it course. to try to make it better. But like, like I think that like where exactly the, the point is to make the transition, I think we could revisit to kind of make it um, sort of less cheap to shoot over. Uh, the, yeah, the it, it really there. does break um because yeah. the map builders yeah, this is the worst example yeah. yeah i hate this example yeah the, i totally agree with you this is this is no good the the map builders yeah. obviously if you have something like this in the game uh no matter yeah. what they build there's they're basically screwed because if we yeah. find out because this this, yeah. this should be a safe spot for anyone there just yeah flat out but because players 
that notice sort of thing, they will abuse it and yeah. abuse it. And someone yeah. new to the game will be like, what just happened? What just happened? And oh, well, we'll take it away. Like we, it, we know this, um, it hasn't been like our top priority. Like we've got a lot of things that we're working on to fix. Um, but yeah, I agree with you philosophically that this is too much. And this is sure. one of the reasons why when people said, just make it center screen aiming, I've always said, well, then oh. you don't understand you these don't mechanics understand. because yeah. This you you prevent this from center uh, with center screen aiming, but what it results into, I played Ultimate Edition for like twelve hundred hours. What right. it results into is that you can back a through the entire wall, so you can just right. angle yourself like this and just back a, and it'll just blow someone across, and the game just turned into yeah. this this back they a won't fight. Even see it you. was like half the time, like you, they won't even see you get killed. And right? and that was that was bad. Uh, and you could say it was balanced, but because the UE so shotgun wasn't as powerful as, as this, or it didn't feel as powerful as this, it was more um, a case of... It's different. It's different. This power, this shotgun is really quite weak. Um, uh, well, I meant more in UE. They, they, it was they like... Different, they use different damage models. Like, um, the Gears 1 to, th to 3 changed the damage models. So, um, Gears 1, like... Um, yeah, anyway, they had that, like, a lot more randomness in it. So, right. like, uh, like straight Gears 1 had even more, and UE had, a, like, still had some. There's very little randomness in the Gears 5 one, which might be why it sort of feels like it, it hits so hard mm -hmm. um, uh, at close range. Yeah. But, yeah, we should, we, should, we should make those cases better where you're shooting over the walls. I think that um, it's not really, it's not fair, it's not good gameplay, it's just cheap, and I think we should improve it for sure. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's great news. And it's all, I remember when watching eSports, especially back on Ultimate Edition, you would just know what people were going to do um, because of how they, get, how they got into cover, right? And like LAN is obviously a completely different game to online. But in online, when you were lagging, and remember, my connection is really good. So even when I had a one millisecond ping on UE, which I remember it was in mm -hmm. 60 hertz servers, but still, um, there were many, many cases where I could be in a back a fight like i was just describing and i would just hit every shot with the back a but because the game would just because we're moving so fast it would basically not register anything until then someone right. just clicked but that type of meta yeah it's okay for an experienced player to deal with but new players are never gonna get behind any of that and so i can That's i right. can understand like, why people even, quit so and even like when we say experienced players it's more like people like really ultra experienced players that have accepted that that's how the game has played yeah. as opposed to like, you know, experienced players that still think it's like not a great way to play a game. Right. Like anyway, so, so I think like something else real like, quick about the, uh, the yeah, movement. Um, mm -hmm. What is the thought process or what is the reason if there is any reason that you found so far between the fact that default layout is uh, the inputs register after you press the button so as you let go on release and alternate is on press what's so yeah so <laughs> what's with that because so, that yeah uh, like, we like, we say so a, a, we're gonna compensate for it we're just gonna we're just gonna you know abuse the system to sure no i and, 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 so, and like i'm i'm of two minds about this so like one like default like you, you it has to differentiate between like sliding and running, right? So it has to be on release to know how long, like you. But it wasn't have held this way in Gears for. Four, so why? Well, because it now to, it really it feels super delayed. It feels really slow to wall bounce, and it's almost as if even if you just tap the button, it still waits for you to hold the button to start roadie running. That's what it feels what? like. Yeah. Oh it, wait, but you said you said sliding. Sliding is different than. Than running no no, no. It, like, because like if you see me wall bounce now i play on the whole like sure. alternate um setting that's rebound to to default basically yes. so so all basically alternate because it's on press like just like, because there's no running in it but i like, have my x button just... my roadie run set to a as well so it's basically the same right, button so basically what you're right so what you're saying right so you've used a way of of, of improving the logic that's behind it which is yeah, I, we break to be honest, it. We do it. <laughs> but no matter what. Okay, you, so can you set it to the, can you set it to default and do the same thing? Can you show me. Oh, it's like massive difference. Yeah, massive difference. It feels really like so. You saw me go pretty quick there. Like I'm no um, no expert in this, but 
when I try to do it now, I have to get it like a shorter range, but when I do it now, it's it's gonna look really clunky. Sure. See, it, it looks slower, it feels slower, and in a gunfight, especially the Gears gunfight, where you have to might you might have to switch things up, wall bounce once or twice, and then roadie strafe no, 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 out no, of the no, way. No, I get I I get the motivation. So, what I'm surprised by, like, it feels the really one piece slow. I was missing wasn't the on release versus press. The one piece I was missing that people weren't telling me was that the rebinding over top of using roadie run on the same button. So what that means to me is that our default threshold is different. So well, that should be easily fixable. Okay, well, I, so like, I did tell like you this on Twitter, but I mean, you get sure. flooded. No, 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 no. but oh. the, the, the thing that, yeah, the thing that, that, uh, um, that like, I missed, I, maybe it was in the write-up somewhere, was the, like, the binding of over top of the other, which I, I probably just didn't read closely enough, but, um, because I, like, the on-press versus on-release of the A button for sliding makes total sense as to why, like, one would be faster than the other. I agree. Now, um, of course. like... But the fact that you bound roadie run over top of like the the A button using two different methods, right? So you've got and still and roadie even run then, both on A. Because I think this was a still thing. Faster. This was there a should thing be no our system should be there should be no difference in that in that case. Like but, if you rebound them like over top of each other like that, then mm -hmm. then there should be no difference between that and default. And the fact that there is is just a straight bug. Okay, well there you hear, guys. That's one of the things. <laughs> um, what else was there? So in the beginning of our conversation, I was talking about how things feel like there's a delay between things happening. So say with with an up A or a reaction shot um, in Gears 4, Gears 3, etc. We'll just stick to mm -hmm. Gears 4 and 5 as a difference. Um, yeah. You you feel like more in control, like you're able to stop the roadie run quicker and get out of that animation and go into a slide or something. When in Gears 5, it all... Maybe it's just me. Yes. Uh, maybe when I see no, better so players that, play. That's true. So like, like we, we got a lot of, okay, not a lot. Like the, one of the challenges is knowing which feedback to respond to. Right. So some of the feedback revolved around, um, like this idea of punishment, like why aren't people punished for sort of making a bad move and by putting in punishments for bad moves, when people use those moves to do good things, they're still punished. Right. So, um, like what we heard was like out of out of a like a roadie run and into a slide or out of a roll into a slide, like um, more for the roll. Like this person had misrolled. Why do we let you? Why don't we like? Why do we let you slide so they can end up avoiding the shot? Mm -hmm. um, so we ended up putting a delay in there so they couldn't do that. Well, that also just means that when the person intentionally rolled sideways, then they also still can't yeah. like like slide out as quickly, right? So mm -hmm. we're looking at. Like improving that, um, uh, I don't want to get into the details of how yet of because course. we're still not finished. Um, but we're looking at making that so that kind of more intentional things work better and and things that are sort of true, real, true miss rolls are punished. But um, when they're used wisely, they aren't. And um, that also kind of <laughs> carries over to the roadie run. That I bet you um, the roadie run into uh, slide is probably. Um, can't remember exactly why we modified that now i don't know that we actually have it might just be a bug but i don't remember making a specific change there so i'll just talk with jamie right yeah okay, i'll talk Something to jamie else. about it and we'll, t we'll take a look i wanted to ask you um you during one of the dev streams where you were on with dana and octus and you spoke mm -hmm. about the adhesion the friction etc there's still people yeah. who are massively confused about that, so you don't have to con yeah. explain again because it's yeah. on them to understand that. I know. But in this case, yeah. um, you also mentioned that uh, adhesion would kind of kick in as soon as you move the right right stick. But I'll show you no, this. No, no, wait, sorry. Sorry, what, like, adhesion, um, if you're on a target and the both of you are moving, it will move, f like, for you, right, a little bit. Now, magnetism... If you're moving the right stick, will just slow. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry. Friction. If you're moving the right stick, will just slow it down ever so slightly as you move over um, an enemy. Now it's almost unnoticeable, but it was like friction was one of the key innovations that I think Halo One brought. Um, so like if you just if you keep still and you just sort of move the right stick a little bit, uh, I'm not the left, the left stick. stick. Yeah, yeah. 
So, he, so if he's not you moving, might have to be. It doesn't do anything. No, but it, it doesn't do anything. If you move the right one a little bit and he moves, it might pull you with it. Take a look. Well, it, I don't even have yeah, to. Yeah, he has to so move. He, he can move. He can move, and it'll. I can just track him by moving yeah. the left stick. Um, I'm glad you turned turned this down. Elite, move. Don't look at me. There you go. They're really bad at following directions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it it just because basically what it's saying is with a console, like this is a very, very common system. This is not unique to us. This is almost in every shooter. So like it's saying like on a console, like one of the skatiest things, like the things that's is this sort of both people moving and tracking a target. Now, um, this is really in most games to kind of make the shooting experience just feel better. And I think that because it was our first go at using it, um, I think we kind of misdeployed it at launch. And now that everybody's so aware of this, it makes it really hard. Like I think if we. Well, this also with works this, through I... walls. I'm not sure if you knew that. So the yes, thing I showed. And I think. You... Oh, okay. We have to. We have to like. There's there's weird reasons why that's true. Um, but we are, we are aware. still. Yeah, we're aware. Right. Um. Yeah, it works through walls, which it shouldn't. And I've given them the same feedback, but there's there's sort of weird reasons there's, why that's I the bet case. there's weird reasons. Um, so magnetism is the like one that's been in the game for a long time, and yeah. fr friction's been in there from the beginning. So magnetism, um, I think, has been around at least Gears 2, if not Gears 1. And that's just... When we're going to take... Because it's there's a high-latency environment, we're just going to take a little bit of liberties that if you're like really close we're gonna bend your like we're gonna just like i mean i understand the, i understand a that. little you bit have, you to the to. left right you have to so um yeah like it's it's just due to the precision of the controllers versus like the game and, and if we were to take it off like rifle fire would just feel like you're playing on a 1999 game so well, the, the thing um, now I, I we've done that sort of we, with we that. did that in, in gears four we did it in competitive yeah. well yeah we never had this adhesion in gears four no, I was talking about magnetism. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, uh, yeah I've seen yeah. that. But I understand for competitive because it's competitive tuning and it's played on LAN. Yeah. You have compet if you have magnetism on LAN, I mean, that just ruins the whole... For, for competitive players. Yeah. I wouldn't mean, say it ruined. It just lowers the skill gap a little bit. It, do it doesn't... I don't think it ruins it. It just... What well, we wanted one of the big complaints four. with uh, competitive players who wanted to play core. They, they couldn't they didn't want to deal with something well, like that core is so different core and competitive tuning is so different in gears 4 like oh yeah one of the reasons they would say like the other thing is people get sort of sometimes what you're seeing is magnetism and sometimes you're just seeing the collision vol volume like yeah. it's the collision volume is not like if you take your pistol like you, you'd have to go in and turn aim assist off and then use the pistol and kind of figure out where the collision volume is because the collision volume is like kind of a li little bit like where like a bit of a like you know puffy jacket on yeah, them because yeah. because we have to get everybody as as much as we can kind of inside that now we don't some characters still poke out from it um but because it's a consistent hitbox oh yeah, yeah that's we, the other thing is shooting off to their right is different than shooting off to their left because of the the right hand side yeah but most people at least in my stream yeah. we've done this a hundred times so we're yeah, kind of yeah. used to this already uh yeah. and if it's part of the meta like most games are are not broken I don't want to sound insulting to you, but like we as just players, we see something, we see someone yeah. abuse something, we just say that's the way the game is. But yeah, technically yeah. speaking, certain things are just broken. But you just say, oh, whatever. If you can do it and I can do it, we'll just deal with it. Right. But as the years right. went on, we've all started to learn more and more about what's more effective. Because right. especially in something like ranked, people just want to kind of win and do well. Yeah. Um, and a lot of us, like just now, before you showed up, I was playing a bunch of ranked games. And the the point differentiation between like what I matter, like I had 19.3 thousand points or something. And mm -hmm. I had two split screeners on my team. And somehow the other team uh, outranked <laughs> us. Uh, or I know we outranked them. And I just kind of sat, and I lost points because of that. Not many, because I finished top of the team. Yeah. But I, to me, it's still like on top of certain problems with with tuning. Um, that is just yeah, the ranked. Uh, it's almost as best. if all the because this happened in Gears War Three long before you guys started with Gears. Um, sure. That as soon as the game died, 
most people stopped caring about how to play properly or just, you know, for fun. Right. And they would just abuse the game's mechanics, like spawn in with retros and just camp everywhere where they could. Um, and in the competitive game modes, like execution on Gears 3 and stuff like that, the, yeah. the competitive playlist, um, it, it didn't have those weapon spawns. You just spawn in with Lancer and Nasher. So it was right. always like you had to choose whether you played something you didn't want to play or because it had a better tuning or... You played, you know, what you wanted to play, but you had to deal with people who just did that on purpose. Um, mm. And yeah, it, it it's just something we all have to deal with. But new players, it, it's almost like a rite of passage when you learn how to play. And a lot of people that I've noticed that play this game are probably from the Game Pass, which is fine. But they jump into ranked completely yeah, aware, we're gonna get, we've already talked about this. Was, we're we're gonna be putting like a level a level lock like we did in four into uh yeah um uh into five as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. Um what also would yeah, help like, I think is if you I don't know if this is possible because obviously the game gets mm -hmm. changed all the time, but maybe um you guys made a video on Gears 4 explaining the you know sp the spread of the shot shotgun and the range etc. Right. You don't have to go that in depth, but maybe put on paper exactly what the differences are um, or what the mechanics are because I'm not even sure what the healing mechanics in this game are anymore. If is it the sure. same as Gears 4 competitive where you get shot, you have to hit the wall to start yeah, healing and it's pretty close. Yeah, it's it's very close to Gears 4. Yeah. Well, see, that's something that I really didn't like. I'm dealing with that now. But me mm -hmm. as like just the run and gun type of guy that'll I'll just go gun ho, and I just don't care. Uh, but it it neuters me <laughs> essentially sure. because so I, all you have to do I is kind of touch cover. Like that's the thing that sort of yeah. the, the biggest benefit is just tap is just like finishing a slide. Yeah, but that's like, something that we is... never had to deal with because that's what gave because that's what you meant in, in Gears Four. Uh, the core in Gears 4 uh, was very yeah. snappy, very responsive. It was just complete yeah. chaos. And it's because people could just fight each other and even mid-fight, they would start healing. But if you're forced to take cover just just for a split second, right. because people are your, so... Your audio, either your audio or my audio cut out. Oh, sorry. Um, be, what part did you not hear? <laughs> sorry, yeah. like I, I totally get the point that it, it, it's, it was intended to slow like the game down to kind of um like give more consequence to kind of some bad behavior like and again this is sort of what i was talking about where we were ending up at the end of four was like punishing bad behavior and kind of that ended up meaning that we ended up like kind of scooping some people that used it properly into that right and that ended up kind of like i said kind of bruising the game a little bit and that's again one of the things that we're going to start taking a look at how to kind of find a better solution to those things as opposed to just punishing everybody that kind of does does it this way right okay okay and that's like an you're right like i think that's something we should revisit i don't know that i think that that giving people a bit of a like a healing delay for kind of um kind of overusing their energy so to speak like kind of exhausting themselves um works out okay i just i think we probably have overtuned it to be honest but Again, I don't want to, like, it's really hard for us to kind of spread over the entire system and, and just kind of change so many things at once. So we're going to, like, oh, of course. once the game is live, we're going to start with movement and see how that goes. And then we'll kind of roll into some of the delays and maybe we'll, like, take a look at the healing um, after that. So um, we'll, we'll move as fast as we can, but we kind of want to make one change um, at a time. Right. And just make a good change, basically. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Um, um, so I got to go. Um, uh, get some lunch yeah so uh, <laughs> of course no problem but uh, no problem. yeah no i appreciate the conversation and uh, i really appreciate the sort of constructive thoughts and um and the amount of work you put into this so just wanted to say thank you oh thank you i mean i really appreciate it because i'm i'm sort of not just with gears but with gaming i'm sort of at my the end of my rope to be honest because i've looked at other games i've played other games and i just kind of think like gears is my thing I've, it's always been my thing. It's my go-to game. It's helped me through a lot of things and met all these people. Um, and now, like, on Gears 5, it's like there's so much change and there's so much hostility between everybody. It's very hard to kind of find that middle ground now to say, like, right. do we really want to play this game? Do we really want to? Because I fear that the same thing will happen that happened um, 
during Gears 4 with, you know, the Hammer Burst thing, where lots of us were constantly hammering on that. And it would just, it just felt, it felt like it was, wasn't going anywhere. And then eventually you guys made it a pickup weapon. And then it also didn't help because those people that abused it ended up quitting every game or something. <laughs> you know, it, it's... Yeah, it, and I think, I think we've learned how to be more responsive. And I think mm. we've gotten, like... To, to be totally honest, like, Gears 4 launching, even as, like, I know that people had a lot of issues with it, but even at, like, as good as it was at launch was kind of a bit of a miracle. Like, it was it was a two and a half year development cycle where we had to rebuild the game completely. Like, yeah. every everything, absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And to make it feel like Gears, and it was our first game as a studio, and to kind of even have it come out as it was, was like really um awesome to be frank and then like we learned a lot over its live cycle and i think that we probably overcompensated for a little bit of it at launch of gears 5 but we've learned a lot about how to interact and listen and have a discourse with the community yeah, so I, I know personally how that you'll you'll see that kind of over the course of five a lot more response from us because we kind of know how to do it now as opposed to before where we were just I'll, I'll like I'll speak for myself like s completely unprepared yeah. for how like much interaction to have oh, and yeah. how to have an interaction with the community. <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah, so I, I know really, the gears. I really appreciate it, like taking vocal. the time to like do all the work that you do on this, and I really hope that we can get gears to a place that that you're you're happy with. I appreciate that, man. That means a lot, dude. All right. Yeah, well, have a great day. You go or eat. Night, whatever it is there. Yeah, it's evening. Yeah, it's evening. I'll go uh, talk to my people. Thank you very much, Ryan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Whew. God damn. What the hell, dude? That is some trippy shit. <laughs>